Good morning again. Welcome back. Um, we're going to do our shared reading now. So yesterday we started reading a book called What Would You Do With a Tale Like This? Show you the cover of the book. So this is what we started reading yesterday. And we read about the animals' noses and ears yesterday. And before we get into reading um, the book some more, I wanted to uh, focus back on what our skill was that we were working on. So we were working on comparing and contrasting yesterday. And yesterday we used um, a Venn diagram. So for the I do part, I compared the two pets that I have, uh, my cat to my fish, and I put similarities in the middle and differences on the outside. And then when we read the, the shared reading text, we compared a platypus and a mole. So we put their similarities again in the center and their differences on the outside. Today, we're going to work on the same skill, but you don't just have to use a Venn diagram in order to compare and contrast um, things within the text. So you can also use a T-chart. Um, so it's a T-chart because it looks like a T. Um, I've split it down the middle too because we're going. this is what we're going to do, um, what I'm going to do to model this for you right now. So this will be the I do for today. And then this will be, after we read the text, what we'll do together as best we can through, through this video. Um, so if I were in my class for the we do part, you know, I would take um, comments and questions from the kids to add to, to our t-chart. And then there is um, a follow-up activity that you can do if you choose to it is in the Google Drive that I shared with you. If you're having trouble accessing it, please feel free to text me through the dojo and um, I can get you access to that. So for um, the, uh, the I do part today, and this is actually, if you did the follow-up activity yesterday, this is kind of reinforcing that if you did that at home for the you do part. So it asks you to compare two games. So I'm going to compare these two games. These are two of Dylan's games that he has here at the house. Okay? So I'm just going to open each game and show you a little bit about it before I make my um, compare and contrast here about similarities and differences. So the first game is called Paint Shop. So if I open this game, okay, I have um, something that looks like this. It has a bunch of these little slots and all these different colors. And the idea is you take okay, one of the little paint brushes out, and you can see on this side it says green. And on this side, it says verde, which is Spanish for green. And then what you're supposed to do is match the green paintbrush into uh, its green can of paint. So that's how you play this game. And then for the Dr. Seuss matching game, it has a bunch of cards like this that you would lay out on the table or the floor. And then you want to try to, you'd lay them face down like this. If you've ever played a matching game, you lay them all face down so that you can't see them. And then you take turns going through and turning over um, a card, two cards at a time, to see if you can find a match. So like this. This would be a match. Okay? So let's take a minute now to say how are these games the same and how are they different? Well... One way that these games are the same is that they're both matching games, right? You have to match in these games. So they're both matching games. Matching games. Okay. Now, something that's different, though, about the matching is in the Dr. Seuss game, you're matching cards, right? Matching cards. Or col um, pictures, I should say. Right? We're matching pictures together. So in one game, you're matching pictures. But in another game, in the paintbrush game, you're matching colors. So that's how they're different. So they're the same in that they're both matching games. But well, one matching game matches pictures and the other matches colors. All right? Um, another difference I was thinking about is, um, so the language, right? So um, the, the Dr. Seuss game, um, Dr. Seuss matching, you're matching the pictures, you know. Um, but in the other game, you have 
another language on the back, right? So um, in the paint, the paintbrush game, it actually uses um, English and Spanish, all right? So they're different. Um, and one game provides the Spanish language, too, is provided. Okay. All right, so that is an example of comparing and contrasting two different things using a T-chart instead of a Venn diagram. Now we're going to move on to the books. I'm going to move my computer down so that you can see the shared reading text. Right. So remember that we were reading, what do you do with a tale like this? And um, yesterday we read here was our introduction that tell, told us all the different things that we were going to read about in the book. We read what else I can see a little better. So we read what would you do with a nose like this? And then we learned about the different animals' noses that we saw. Okay. And then, what would you do with ears like these? And we talked about some of the ears that we saw. We predicted what kind of ears, what animal they belong to. Okay. All right, so let's see for today. Today says... What do you do with a tail like this? So take a minute to look at these tails that you see and make some predictions about what animals you think these tails belong to. So let me share my thoughts with you. I think that this is a giraffe, giraffe's tail, and I think that this is a skunk's tail over here. I'm not sure about the. This might be a, a monkey tail, maybe. All right. Let's see. All right. So let's see what animals we have here. Okay. So over here. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. So this, we were right, this is a giraffe, and he uses his tail when flies land on him. Very similar to a horse. I know horses do the same thing. When flies land on them, they use their tail to kind of like swat the, the flies away. Ooh, and here, look how the author is writing differently again. Remember we talked yesterday that he doesn't just, the author doesn't just write from left to right and top to bottom. He's kind of creative with the way he's writing his text. So this says, if you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on the way. So if you see a skunk and his tail is lifted, you want to get away. He will spray. Here we have a lizard. And I like how the author follows the lizard's tail to tell about the lizard. So it says, if you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. And look what else the author did. Since the lizard can break off his tail to get away, I like how the, actually this would be more the illustrator, right? Drew the lizard um, covering both pages and it kind of shows a break in the tail here between the two pages. And I, I don't know if they did if the illustrator did that on purpose, um, but it's kind of cool because the author talks about how the lizard's tail can break off. So it kind of looks like it was broken off here between the two pages. Down here, oh, if you are a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. Ooh. And up here for the monkey, if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. What do you do with eyes like these? So take a minute to look at all the eyes you see here and see if you can figure out what animal these eyes belong to. Okay, so I think that this is an eagle right here. Um, 
this might be this might be some sort of, of lizard here. This kind of looks like some sort of lizard too. And I don't know, some sort of monkey or frog, fish maybe. Let's see. All right, so over here, if you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the air. So the eagle uses his eyes to spot tiny animals to swoop down and catch to eat. Ooh, and if you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. So whereas we can only look one way at a time, right? The chameleon's eyes, its two eyes can go in opposite directions to be able to look two different ways. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. A four-eyed fish? I want to know more about him. How can a fish have four eyes? How can he look below and above the water at the same time? So like yesterday, if I have a question about something, I would write it down on a post-it and I would stick it in the book here so that I could ask about it. Okay. Over here. If you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. So this bush baby here uses his eyes to see at nighttime. And if you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Ooh, he can squirt blood out of his eyes. Do you know something I was thinking over here about the chameleon? I actually have a question about the chameleon. I don't know if you're if you realize um, like a horse, right? So the horse's face, his long nose, he, he has eyes on either side of his head, right? Which is how the horse can look two different ways at a time. I'm wondering if the chameleon is the same way. Like, is the shape of his head so narrow that he has an eye on each side and that's why he's looking two different ways? Or is he capable of his eyeballs actually looking two different ways? So that's another question I would ask. Is the chameleon, um, are his eyes like, like a horse's eyes? Where, you know, one eye's on either side of the head so that they can see in two different ways. Because it says that he can look two ways at once. So I just want to know a little bit more, more about that. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for today. So we read about eyes. Okay. What, would you, what do you do with eyes like these? And we read about the tails, right? I think I'm going to choose today, and again, if I was in the classroom with the kids right now, I would say, hey guys, which two animals do you want to compare? Use our T-chart for same and different. Um, but since I, we aren't in the classroom, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the lizard and the scorpion. Okay, so I'm going to bring the computer back up so I can write those on our, our list here, our teacher. Okay, so I'm going to use the same T-chart that I started before. So I said I was going to use the lizard and the scorpion. So uh, I'm just going to write here so we know. Oops. So we know who we are comparing. So we had lizard and scorpion. All right. So that's what we're going to use here for our same and different. Right. We're comparing them. How they're the same on this side and how they're different on this side. Okay. So I know that the lizard breaks off its tail to get away. I read that in the text, right? I'll show you again. So the lizard breaks off its tail to get away. The scorpion uses its tail to give a nasty sting. Okay, so obviously they're the same because they both have a tail, right? But I want to be more specific than that. All the animals on this page have a tail. What is special about the lizard and the scorpion is that they use their tails to protect themselves, right? The lizard is breaking off his tail so he can get away, and the scorpion is stinging something with his tail. And I feel that animals would do that if they're trying to escape a predator, um, if they want to protect themselves or be safe. So for the same, I'm going to say that they use, they both use, 
their tails. They both use their tail to protect themselves. Period. So you see I did this in two different ways too. Up here I was just making notes, right? I didn't write a complete sentence. At matching games, we have pictures, colors, uh, the one game uses Spanish on it. So I just made notes up here. Down here I wrote a complete sentence. I used a capital letter and I put my period at the end. So let me reread, make sure this makes sense. So one way that they're the same is they both use their tail to protect themselves. So that's something that they both do. Now I can go on to say a difference in how they use their tail, right? So think again, how does the lizard use his tail to protect himself? Take a minute to look, look back at the text. And again, it says, if you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. So how does the lizard use his tail to protect himself? So I would say the lizard, and if I wrote a sentence over here, I'm going to write sentences over here. The lizard uses his tail by breaking it off to get away. I'm going to say um, from predators. Okay. So predators would be animals that are like preying on the lizard, that are trying to get to the lizard to eat it, attack it, whatever. And then finally, if you're a scorpion, so look now, if you're a scorpion, okay, if you're a scorpion, how do you use your tail to protect yourself? So if you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. So I'm going to leave that blank right now, and if you're at home and you'd like to write a sentence and have your parents take a picture and send it to me on the dojo, and then we'll review tomorrow when we come back, tell me how the scorpion uses its tail to protect itself. Okay, We know the lizard uses it by breaking it off to get away. So if something grabs a hold of its tail, it can break its tail off and get away, right? So how does the scorpion use his tail? Um... To protect himself. So I will see you back here uh, this afternoon for math and hope you have a great day. Try to get some, you know, I ready, Lexia. I'll post science to the class dojo so you can work on that. Um, and that kind of goes along with our theme from Read Aloud Loud this morning about dreams. Um, try to get some lunch and do some physical activity. I've posted the sight word game. I've also posted, um, my husband gave me a, a website to, you can do some health um, education with your children at home um, and try to get some drop everything and read time in. And yeah, I'll see you later for math this afternoon. Thank you.